Good morning, everyone. Welcome today to uh, Calvary Temple and those watching online. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad that you're with us today. We're excited today. We have a missionary with us. Hadn't had a missionary with us in a little while. It's Crystal Alexander. She is a missionary to Glasgow, Scotland. And uh, that uh, actually some of my some of my own family heritage. So maybe she'll she'll uh, maybe she knows some of my family that I haven't ever met either. We'll never can tell. But uh, we're excited to have her with us today. She was, you may remember, in France, working with Operation Rescue for a while, if I'm correct on that. And uh, we are glad to have her back with us today to share with us today about, about uh, what's going on in Scotland, where the Lord has her now and where he has her ministering today. So let's stand up. Let's worship God together this morning, and let's enter in and have a good time. Welcome home, Donna, by the way. Glad to see her. Not welcome home for good. I'm she, she just visiting, I'm sure, but... Uh, the Lord can do anything, so we'll keep on praying that she'll hear from Jesus today and uh, come back where she is. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who is. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And He won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet.
word to follow our lives. We're going to keep on praising him. Thank you, Jesus. Extremely weak and needs a touch, and uh, we 
I'll just put it out there. We're all family here. We've got a decision we've got to make for her um, to be able to take care of her effectively, make sure that she gets the care she needs and, and that she doesn't fall again and doesn't have issues again. So help us pray for wisdom on that, for Sharon Dorothy and for Sharon Dorothy and her daughter Kathy and us that, as we make decisions and talk about hard things here. Um, you will notice that on the list there are a few names that I've taken off. If I haven't heard from you in, well, some of them months, I went ahead and pulled them off the list. If you'll tell me they need to be back on there, put them right back on there. No problem whatsoever. I don't mind at all. With these, I know we have her needs for. Uh, continued prayers for Debbie, Lori, and Amber, for Donna Edwards, for Tanya and Joan, uh, Brittany Oaks, Justin and Lucas Oaks. Lucas, how's your wrist? Lucas, how's your wrist? Doing good? Coming along? All right. He's got some healing to do there. Uh, Craig for healing. Claude. Uh, Claude's having trouble with insomnia, and that's that's taking a toll on some things. So please remember Claude for that. Loretta Lee continues to deal with chronic issues. Um, just just lift her up, believe God to bless her and touch her in every way. Uh, Carolina, uh, my brother Michael, uh, Ray, uh, which is uh, uh, Dee's brother as well, and then Sue, Adam's daughter, grandchildren, and then Dee and Randy both have unspoken needs that they've shared with us. So. Those are the needs I have before me today, as far as anything updated or anything new that I'm aware of. And again, if I don't, please don't be offended at me if I took your person's name off the list. Um, we haven't heard anything in a while on some of these people, so I, I felt like we just time to clean the list up a little bit. And these people I know that we that I've heard from you on in recent weeks, and we know that they need to be on there. So, um, without a doubt. So, if they need to come off, you can tell me that too. But we'll take that. And be glad to take them off. Other needs or something else to share with us this morning before we pray? Debbie? Wednesday, I'm going to get my hands something. They're going to do something. That I'm going down to St. Joe. Going to have some tests on Wednesday? All right. D? Uh, Carolina did have to have a fusion in good. her back. Uh, she's doing good. Still in a lot of pain with that. I'll brew that. Uh, Ray has surgery on Thursday for. I think a hernia, something about his hernia. Okay. Do they remove this? I don't know. But he's having surgery Thursday. And then Sue, yesterday was the one year anniversary, and they all had a pretty rough day. So, yes, continue praying for her. Okay. Remember these folks. Remember Sue and Ray and, and Carolina especially. Carolina and Ray for healing and Sue for emotional and spiritual blessings. Anyone else have a need or update for us this morning? Justin, how's the back? True answer. Don't give me that. Don't we? We're doing good, not having issues. Going to take you off the list or leave you there? All right. Praise the Lord. We'll do that. I'm excited to do that. I know it's been a rough, been a rough five. Update on me. My leg is better. My voice obviously is some better, such as it is. And um, Sharon this week, she was extremely sick Wednesday night through about Friday. Couldn't keep anything on her stomach and just on the borderline dehydrated. And she's back and well. And just imagine a, a almost dehydrated woman trying to help a woman that fell up off the floor. Um, and it was quite a scene that from what I'm, what I'm told, I wasn't home yet. It was in the afternoon, and, but uh, Dorothy, it was, it was quite a thing. So, but please pray for Dorothy. I know you do, but please pray for Dorothy because this is, this, is, this is getting really difficult in what we're facing and dealing with here. So uh, just pray for God to give her the touch she needs in her body that, that she just be whole and well, and that's the main thing. So anybody else, anything else? Let's stand, if you would. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today, and then we'll continue on in worship. If you need special prayer, I'd like to be prayed for, but please come forward. We'll be glad to anoint you with all pray the prayer of faith. After worship this morning, we have the honor of, uh, of uh, dedicating the Woodrow today, and we're looking forward to that. That'll be a, a special and sweet moment here as well. Father, well, in the name of Jesus today, we believe that you are the help and hope of all mankind, and we believe for your touch over the situation in Ukraine. Father, speak to the hearts of the Russian leadership. Lord, that they'll stop these atrocities against these innocent people. Lord, we pray for the leadership of the Ukraine, that they'll do everything they can to fight and stand up for themselves and to do what needs to be done. We pray for protection, supernatural protection, Lord God, over your children, missionaries and leaders there in the, in the country, Lord, that are under attack, God, that no weapon formed against them would prosper. We speak blessing today over this church and church family. Lord, I pray for Dorothy. God, that you'd give her rapid healing for her wrist, but God, strengthen her body, her muscles. Her bones, Father, we speak blessing today over Debbie, over her need and situation she faces tests this week. We lift up Lori and Amber and bless, believe you to touch Donna Edwards for Tanya and Joan. Bless Brittany, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that Justin is well. We believe you to touch and bless Lucas today. 
Now to Craig and Claude, God, I pray that he'd sleep and rest well at night. And your blessings, God, to be obvious in that respect. Bless Loretta Lee. Bless Carolina. Touch Michael today, Father, and give him wisdom of what to do financially. We lift up Ray, God, and believe that the surgery will go well and you'll give him a quick recovery. And Lord, we lift up Sue and this entire family. Their hearts are heavy and hurting from, from this loss, and we believe you speak life, peace, and strength to them all. Bless Jim and Tammy's daughter and grandchildren, Father God, in their circumstances. Bless Dee's and, and Brandy's unspoken needs. And Lord, I plead your blood today over this church, over this community, over this state, and over this country. Lord, I pray for our president. Sincerely ask you to bless him, help him, give him wisdom, give him health, give him, Lord, the mind of Christ. And help him, Lord God, to do the things that ought to be done. Bless our leadership in Congress, our folks in the Pentagon. Ask you again today to bless uh, men like CJ as they're, as they're deployed, God, as they're around this world today for the, the purpose and cause of freedom and doing what they do. And we believe you, Lord God, to speak blessings over our families here at home that are in these circumstances as well. And I ask you to touch us, bless us, and help us today by your spirit and by your power. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's worship God together for a few minutes before we get into our time of the word today.
We are coming together here. Let's move over here with everybody, I guess. We enjoy y'all. Gonna be taken away from you. Gonna get where everybody can see him, but what we do here is we, we acknowledge that God has blessed us in such a way that while we were yet in the womb, he formed our inward parts and he He uh, made us to be who we are, where we are, and when we are. This mama and this daddy were were made, oh, he spotted them now. This mama and daddy were, were made on this earth to make him. And we're trusting the high there. Uh, we're just going to have to stop a minute if you're going to look at me like that. That's a happy young man. And, you know, the psalmist said there, when my frame was hidden for you, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought the lowest parts of the earth, my eyes were, I was not even informed yet. But God in his book had fashioned all the days before me. And this little man right here, he is, he's got a great future ahead of him and he is going to do great things. And we're trusting the Lord's going to use him and bless him. And to touch his little life, and then he's going to squirm himself out of my arms here in just a minute when I watch out. But what happens in this boy's life is a big responsibility. And only heaven and eternity will truly tell the tale when it's all said and done. But for parents, for grandparents, for this family, and for this church, we have a privilege and we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to make sure this boy knows what love is. And that he sees parents and family and grandparents and everyone else that, that will do like Philippians chapter 4 and think about the things that are true and noble and just and pure and good and lovely and virtuous and a good report. And that he is going to be brought up all the days of his life, thank you, to, to know the fruit of the Spirit, which by now everybody in this church ought to be able to recite that because I say it every time I get a chance. That he's going to know what love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control is all the days of his life. He spots a lot of stuff, don't he? He, he, caught, he, caught, he caught eyes on this dove up here behind me, and that's where, he's, where his attention is right now. But we know that this boy is a fruit of the, world, of the womb, and he is a reward from Psalm 127, 3. And this boy has a purpose. This boy has a life ahead of him that's going to be amazing and incredible. And we get to be a part of that as a church and as a church family. And today, Jerry and Carrie have brought Woodrow Blake to be to be um, to be dedicated. So I have a question for this family: Do you, at this point in time, do you have the desire to dedicate this boy to the Lord? That you will do your best to raise him in the fear and admonition of Jesus all the days of your life. This is for mom and dad. Do you make the decision here in front of God and everybody to do everything you can do that this boy will one day know Jesus? Grandparents, rest of the family, rest of the church family. We're going to love this boy and show this boy who Jesus is every chance we get. And that's, that's, that's the privilege we have, the joy that we have. And this morning, the, this rose that we'll give to Carrie is a symbol of purity and love. Your care and your concern for this boy and your love for this boy and how you're going to raise him up and teach him and guide him is uh, is a thing that only a mama can do. And I'm going to tell you something. I, you, you know me and my emotions. You know how I'm going to get here. I'm going to tell you something about a mama. A mama is like no other person on this planet. That's right. I'm a daddy. I'm a papa. I've got, there's lots of things that I get to do in my life. But I could never do what she does for our kids, what she does for our grandkids, and what, what any mama that I know, I've ever known, tries to do and, and will do for their children. And it's a phenomenal thing. So... It's a big responsibility, Carrie, and it, it's big shoes to fill. But already you can tell he's happy, he's healthy, he is such a blessing. And he spends, I bet he spends a lot of time with Mama, don't you, right now? That's right. That's where it ought to be. We're proud that that, that happens in these babies' lives. And this red rose, for Dad, this is a, this is a, a symbol of courage and, courage and leadership. This is a man that's going to do his best all the days of your life to show this boy what it means to be a man what it means to be courteous and what it means to be to be respectful and dignified and to be a young man that, that you're proud of. And uh, that's that's what that's for. And this little rose here, it's it's represents it's supposed to be a rosebud and that's just we didn't quite have that small available to us, but it's little little like him right now. And it's it, it represents a life yet unfolded. It represents a life that it's coming into a world in a pretty rough time in history. Give that to mom. 
We're concerned, we're worried, we're fretting. We don't know what's coming, we don't like what's coming. We worry about wars and we worry about the price of everything because everything's going up, especially a trucking family. Good night's price of diesel right now is such, a, such an awful thing. I don't, I, just, I don't know how you sleep at night, to be honest about it, but without Jesus, we probably couldn't. But this boy right here, he may wind up in a truck, he may wind up doing whatever he does. Maybe he'll wind up, maybe he'll be your pastor here one day at the Lord, Terry's. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God's got a plan for this boy's life. And now at this point, we are going to pray for him. We're going to pray for mom and dad. And we're going to pray for this family. That God is going to bless them in every way he can bless them. And that we're going to see this boy grow like we've got to see these other kids in this church grow over the last eight years that I've been your pastor. Not to mention the kids and grandkids that have grown under Brother Gutley and other ministries of, of my predecessor that have had this honor and privilege that I have today. So <laughs> that smile. That will get me every time. We're going to pray for him. We're going to pray for mom and dad and this family, these grandparents. <laughs> We're going to pray God's blessing today in a real and powerful way. Would you would you stand with me this morning? I know you, I know we just sat down, but stand up. Would you stretch a hand toward this boy and toward this family? Let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe today that you have a wonderful and a great uh, future and a life in store for this boy, for this baby Woodrow. We believe you, Lord God, to bless, bless and touch Jerry and Carrie to do their best, Lord God, to be the parents and be the example and to be everything you'd have them to be, Lord God, for him, but Lord, for their, for their own hearts and lives, for their future in heaven as well. Father, that they would show him what genuine love looks like, Lord, to raise him how to be respectful and kind and to be full of the fruit of the Spirit, full of the life in Jesus Christ. As he, when he gets to that age and he makes his decision, Lord, we trust him to be because they've shown him how and what it looks like. And we ask you, Lord God, to bless these grandparents, bless this family. Lord, bless us as a church to, so Lord God, be everything that we need to be for this baby and for this family. Lord, to be the support, the encouragement, and most of all, Lord God, the prayer the prayer support for them. And Lord God, we thank you, we honor you, and believe you bless this baby all the days of his life and bless his family. Lord, to help him and bless him to be the young man that you want him to be. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You've had about enough of me, haven't you? All right. Let's give him a Daddy there. Would you would you just thank the Lord for them this morning? The hand like pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for looking out for you guys. And I'm just looking forward to what God's got for you every day. Amen. God bless. Thank you for sharing that boy with us. It is a privilege and an honor. Me and my emotions for getting y'all carried on. Kids Church, Miss Carly's going to take the kids to Kids Church before we hear from our missionary today. I hope everybody can stay for lunch today and uh, enjoy food and fellowship and, and gather around the table this morning to be together as we let the kids and the, the ruckus dissipate just a little bit. I think back to the, I guess the most recent one that we dedicated would be Sam and uh, see what the Lord's done for him now. Presley, that's right, Presley's been since Sam. But Sam, I, I, I needed it. If I don't forget next Sunday, I'll pull up this video they sent to me. He's writing songs, man. He's up just praising Jesus, just writing songs. Got a little guitar. It's the pre most precious thing you've ever seen. Matter of fact, if I can get it pulled, I can probably pull it up while, while uh, Crystal's ministering to us this morning. And, and uh, I may share it with you in closing this morning because it's, it's worth seeing. And uh, I'm telling you, it's, you, just, you see, the, I've been pastor now since 1996. You know, youth pastor, whatever, in different ways I've been in ministry. And to see these kids, the little ones, as they grow and they learn. I mean, we, Hudson was six months old when we moved here. And now I see this kid now. He's, he's just growing and tall and smart and so funny. I mean, there's so many great things. And we're watching these little ones grow. And, and here we are with Woodrow. And, and uh, there will be others along the line here that I'm certain we'll, uh, we'll look forward to as we grow. And as we grow from the inside out and from the outside in. But it is a privilege. It's such an honor. And I tell you, we're... We're just so thrilled with what God's doing, and 
And uh, he knows what he's got planned for the future. And we're believing God for great things. Well, we are honored today to have Crystal Alexander. We have met Crystal before. I'm not sure if, if you met Crystal before I was your pastor. I don't know, I don't, don't know if you've been to Maryland once before. And uh, she was in France, and now she is in Scotland. And uh, she's there planting churches, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true? Okay. She'll tell you more all about that here and, and uh, give you the details. But, but um, we're glad to partner with her, and it's an honor to partner with her. Because whether we realize it or not, that money you stick in that, that offering for missions every month that goes that ends up in her hands, that is, that's potential souls um, touched and saved in Scotland and uh, previously in France and other places that God's used her. And uh, we're just trusting today that we'll hear something good that will encourage and inspire us uh, by what God is doing through her and for her. And, as I said, at the end of service, we'll receive an offering. We'll pass the bag, receive an offering for her for her ministry today, and uh, would you welcome this morning missionary, Crystal Alexander. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. I always love coming to this church. I'm a very visually stimulated kind of gal, plus the snuggle bugs were great. That was awesome. But I, I just love, you know, stained glass and all the beautiful, you have a very beautiful building and you guys are very kind people thank you for letting me come yeah I was here before I went to France to speak to you and then like a gabillion years ago uh, I was here before I went to Scotland so you've s some of you some of you I don't I don't know was anybody here for that first time I came a million years ago I don't know oh yeah yeah because we talked about that in the back right um, so it's been quite a journey, and I'm going to be sharing that missions journey with you, and I'm going to be preaching the word. I love preaching the word. It gets all my uh, little pistons going inside of me. It's just a thrill to be able to share God's word with you. So uh, we're going to be going to Isaiah. So you want to flip over in your Bibles or your apps or whatever. Um, pull out your parchment and un unroll it over to Isaiah 26. And I want to talk to you about what do you do when all the lights go out? You know, when it gets, I don't mean flick the switches. I mean, like, we've been through this in the past couple of years, right? When everything gets so scary, so dark, what do you do in your personality when all the lights go out? So this is about hope. That's the message. Isaiah 26, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, sharing the word from Isaiah 26, beginning with verse 16. Eventually, we're going to get down to the end of verse 6 in chapter 27. So we're going to bridge between the end of 26 and the beginning of 27. And I've been in Europe as a missionary for, my goodness, I guess it's off and on for about 10 years now, I guess. Um, they have these big murals that they paint. I think other places in the world, too. Those huge murals, and they have a lot of images in it. You've seen these in school textbooks, right? There's such a big painting that they have all these little stories inside. And in reading the scripture today, I really hope you have your imagination cap on, okay? Crank up the dial, and I want you to see the stories. And then at the end, I'm going to ask you, where do you find yourself today? Where is the Holy Spirit confronting you where do you find yourself in these stories in these images so there's six images so I'm going to read a bit and then discuss and read a bit and then discuss okay is that the plan that's the plan Lord God Almighty I come before you I ask that you would string me up like your bow not your arrow arrows your messages inside me you take aim Holy Spirit and you let fly and you strike all of our hearts deeply so that we cannot help but turn and follow you that we won't reject the messages you have for us today prepare us to receive your word in Jesus name amen amen okay the first set of verses is 16 through 18 is where I want to read. So I hope you got your Bibles. Oh, good. You're all looking down. That means you're there. Here we go. Lord, in trouble, they have visited you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was upon them. As a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her pangs when she draws near the time of her delivery, so have we been in your side, O oh Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not accomplished any deliverance in the earth, nor have the inhabitants of the world fallen. <coughs> this is a pretty stiff image, and I know it is, but it's where we're starting. 
Israel, Judah, this is, they had b- been a kingdom, kingdoms for a while, and this was before they were taken into captivity. And they had been utzing over to the nations nearby and kind of, we were, you nailed so many things in Sunday school today, that was brilliant. They'd been utzing in the Baal worship into their worship of God. Israel and Judah were supposed to be set apart to God. They'd been utzing over and had those pagan religions where they burned babies on idols. They were utzing over, and he brought it up in Sunday school, priestesses. And it's become part of their worship of God, and pretty soon they're kind of like pushing God aside, and then that's their core. Doesn't that sound a bit familiar? You know? I think we understand where that is. Then this is what they're saying. Oh, we're going to save the world. We've got it together. We know how to do this. Man, it's almost like we're pregnant. We, we've got the answer. We're going to bring deliverance. Oh, it hurts bad. Yeah, it hurts bad. But we know how to fix everything. We're going to save the earth. But when it comes to it, it's nada. It's wind. It's a, and I don't mean this in the physical, I'm talking about a spiritual thing here, so this is not to hurt any lady. It's about our souls. It is a false pregnancy. And it says at the bottom of verse 18, they can't even get the bad guys. (laughs) That's how impotent we are apart from Christ. We build up all these images and these mirages that we think we can save the world and save ourselves, and we can't. That's a stark image. That's a rough first image, but it's honest, and we need that honesty. Okay, next image, next image. Go to verse, sorry, I'm getting old with glasses. If I leave them on, I can see you, but I can't see the Bible. If I take them up, I can see the Bible, but I can't see you, so we just go back and forth. Okay, verse 19. This is much more hopeful. Your dead shall live together with my dead body. They shall arise Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs. Fresh basil, there you go, cilantro. And the earth shall cast out the dead. This is the salvation. This is what they were needing. Resurrection. Big old-fashioned word, a lot of letters. I don't know how many syllables, but there's a lot going on in there. What does it mean? What was dead Okay, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross, shall we say it? Cross for our sins. And he fully died. He did not faint. And when they laid him on the tomb, on the third day, he came back from death to life for us. That is resurrection power. And then that is extended to us if we will by faith believe on the Son of God and what he did for us on the cross. We were dead in our sins and trespasses and our obstinacy. What else shall we say, right? And then when we ask Jesus into our life and we humble ourselves, there is that resurrection that takes place in our core. You have a beautiful personality, honey. But without Jesus, there is a death living, zombie whatever you want to call that, I don't know, in you. But when Jesus Christ comes in you, That's life. And it says, wake up and sing. This is why we sing those wonderful songs today, because we know resurrection with Jesus Christ. And we're like fresh basil, fresh cilantro, perky, green, lush. That's life in Christ. That is life in Christ. And the earth, tell you what, the earth can't stop you. It can't hold you back, and and it's like, I'm going to pull you down. No, you're not, because I rise with Christ. And I take, tell you, he takes it one step further, and I appreciate this, because he cares about the whole package. My mama died about eight years ago in April, April 3rd, and she lies in a grave. But there is coming Resurrection Day, where, you know, the trump and the loud shout and the dead in Christ shall, I don't know how, I don't know. It don't matter. It's the miraculous power of God. He cares about your whole package. He's not like, I will let that part slip shod by. He cares about you that intimately. And so that is our hope. 
full package resurrection. This is the hope. And you notice it doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, that was a hopeful picture. Are you ready to go down to a tough one again, okay? All right. Verse 20 and 21, the last two verses of chapter 26. Buckle in. Come, my people. Enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation, you can Google that, you can ignore me and go Google that, that's fine. Until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also disclose, reveal, her blood and will no more cover her slain. Wow. Okay, let me, let me connect some dots here. You probably saw the Prince of Egypt cartoon a long time ago. You know the story, the, the fact in the Bible about when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, right? And you know that God told Moses to tell the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, S- let my people go, right? And so, and of course, Pharaoh's being the jerk that he was. He's like, no, no, no. So God starts displaying his power. Like, you think you're going to stop God and his will. And so he starts doing these signs and wonders. And what was it? Like the blood, the river to blood and the frogs and the flies. And go watch the cartoon. Read the Bible. Okay. You get to the 10th one. And God tells his people, you take a lamb, each family, and you slaughter it, and you put the blood over the door on on either side, and you get your kids and your wife, and you go inside. Get granny. You go in there. You roast the meat. Don't boil it. I don't know why. And you sit there, and you eat it, and you get ready because I'm going to deliver you. And God says, because I'm going to pass over Egypt, and I'm going to kill the firstborn, not only of the humans, but of the animals too. Go figure. Okay, whatever. But it is the just indignation. Okay, we got to talk about it. Wrath. Now, I, not you, me. I have a temper. I get frustrated. I come home. I throw my keys on the floor. That's my wrath. That's not God's wrath. He is not a short-tempered person. God is love. He is a strong love. And he is, what is John 3.16? Can we say it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is God. So when we talk about the wrath of God, it's because people say no. And we were talking about that in Sunday school. They keep resisting no. 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 And you, you're walking yourself out the door of relationship with God. What is left if you refuse your only help? If you're drowning in the ocean and you will not receive the life preserver, what's the option, people? Do you know what I mean? I, I'm not yelling at you, but I mean, like, you get so, like, people, people, Please, receive Jesus, please. So that wrath of God is not my short temper. It is people refusing the love of Jesus Christ. And so it says here in our verse, it says, go into your chambers and shut your door. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus and he is your covering. He is your blood over the door. He is how you are saved. And if you have given your heart to Jesus, you don't let the enemy tell you to be afraid like that. You are saved. Here's the old-fashioned phrase, from the wrath to come. You're saved. So there's peace. And it's, it's not because of good works. It's accepting Jesus Christ. Now, I know that's stiff, but it's really important that we wrap our brains around that because the Lord is going to deal with it. And if he winks at someone's sin, that means someone else is getting hurt. So we trust the fair love of the Lord. All right, moving on to verse 1 of chapter 27. I love this one. Okay, chapter 27, verse 1. In that day, what day? That verse we just read. 
in that day, the Lord with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. It's our champion. It's our hero. Come to save us. That old serpent, that old Leviathan, what does Revelation 12 say about that old dragon, that old snake? Who is that old snake? That's right, it's the devil, it's the accuser that keeps telling you that you're worthless and that you, sh you don't belong to God and all those lies. That is the devil that Jesus Christ has had victory over. And you notice how it describes him here. Leviathan's just a way of calling him that. First of all, it says he's a fleeing serpent. We're supposed to resist the devil and he will flee and we're supposed to submit ourselves to God, right? So he's the fleeing serpent. Notice also that he is that twisted serpent. He's always twisting things. I don't know about y'all. I'm sure you're just fine. But when I go through my life and I, I, I start worrying about things and it gets built up worse than it really is, and then pretty soon I'm like, I need your help. You know, Jesus, that twisted serpent keeps playing with it and turning it, you know? And then look at it at that last bit. He will slay the reptile that is in the sea. What's really interesting about that in the sea, if you go read Revelation 17, and you're totally allowed to ignore me for a moment and go look at Revelation 17, it says that the waters are, the, are symbols of the nations in that chapter. And that the serpent, so the serpent is writhing among the nations. Ain't he doing that right now, like with Russia and all of and America? All of us. And he's writhing and twisting. But our hero wins. Jesus stomped that snake's head on the cross at the cross. And then there's coming that day when that accuser of the brethren will be thrown into the lake of fire forever. It's good to come back to these core truths because it gives you peace and you know who your hero is. Now I want to show you something. This is connected. Do you know what um This is from? Any, any guesses? Turkey. Switzerland. That's what everybody says. That's so awesome. You guys do know some of your flags. This, Switzerland would be red background, mm -hmm. white cross. I think a lot of those European nations did have crosses at one time, you know, on their flags. This, okay, this is the flag of England. Okay, let me explain. So, you know, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Okay, you know there's like Scotland, England, that little sea part with Wales in there, and then like there's that separate Ireland, island of Ireland, and the tip top part belongs to Britain. Okay, there's some history for you. Well, this is the flag of England itself. It's, it, it's not states, but that's our best comparison. This is the cross of St. George. Do you know the story about George and the dragon? Okay, okay, good, I get to tell you. Story time with Crystal. So this is a very old folk tale. Um, goes like this. This is the crystal version, okay? So um, there was a lady, and she had been captured by a, a dragon, um, or a grizzly bear, or a you know, a lion, or whatever. But in this case, it was a dragon. And she is about to be destroyed, to be killed. And here comes George, and George... Praise God, God gave you men testosterone. We appreciate you. And I really love the prayers over the baby boy. We need you men. And he's like, no, like you guys do, okay? I can't do it because I'm a girl. But he's like, no. And he comes over and he rescues the lady and kills that old dragon thing. And then, of course, in my version, she falls in love with him. And they get married and they live happily ever after. Okay, that's the crystal version. That's our story. Our lives were being destroyed by that old dragon. And we didn't have hope. And then our champion, our hero came, and he killed that old dragon. And, he, and we fell in love. That intimacy, we belong to him, and we are the bride of Christ. That's our hope. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. That is our inheritance as Christians, as children of the Most High God. So I love, I, I love that. I love that. And i got to show you another flag. Can you imagine I sound like bagpipes for a second? 
interested if you take the Scottish flag and you overlay it over the English flag which happened like in 1700 that's how you get that Union Jack the British flag it's literally overlaid yeah there's a couple of extra red stripes I think that's they tell me it has to do with Wales but that doesn't make any sense because their flag is like white and green with a red dragon so I have no idea what's going on there but um this is the flag of Scotland God's sending me to Scotland to be a missionary to plan a church. Guys, <laughs> seriously. Back in 2014 to 16, I went as a missionary associate to Scotland. If God, I'm going to stop. If God is speaking to your heart about missions, I recommend you look into missionary associate because it's a good get your feet wet, kind of follow someone else and, and get going. So if the, if the Lord is speaking to anybody today in this room about missions, See, pastor, come talk to me. Talk to someone who can help you look into what it would take to get that going, okay? All right. So I went as a missionary associate to Glasgow, Scotland. How do I describe Glasgow, Scotland to you? They do not wear kilts all day long, though I think all y'all men should be wearing kilts because I think you'd be looking mighty fine. But <laughs> that's just me and my mother. Nobody else agrees. So anyway, sorry, neither here nor there. Um, they're just people. But the, it's the biggest city in Scotland. It's when you include the suburbs, it's like 1.8 million. But it, when you just get city center, it's like 800,000. After Paris, that seems really small, believe me. 11 million in Paris. Um, I worked at a little church on the tough side of town. I mean, the neighborhood is well known for being a tough side of town. And I just did whatever. You know, scrub toilets, help with the Sunday school, whatever. You know, you, you just help. That's what the Church of Christ is. We're brothers and sisters. We deal with it. We just help out. And um, I don't know how to say this, but it's kind of like, I guess, falling in love. I just, I fell in love with the city. Yes, it was hard. Yes, uh, there would be times I'd pull into the parking lot of the grocery store, and I'd just pull my dog in my lap and just start crying because it was just culture shock, and everything was so weird and everything. But I fell in love with the city. It's, how do I describe it? It's a, a grungy city. I mean, they got this, like, stuff going on. But yet it's a beautiful architecture, Victorian, really cool stuff, even older stuff. But then there's like these 1970s tower blocks and then edgy armadillo modern architecture. It's so random. Like that. I love that. So schizophrenic. I match just great. It's brilliant. And, um, and the people are like that too because uh, it's heavy industrial. So like the men worked like dogs. And then they came home and then it was just abusive situations at home. And the women worked like dogs. And the the children are on crack. It's just rough. And that, that part is, those jobs are gone now. It's, they're, re, they're very resilient people. They're recreating themselves all the time. Um, so it's artistic. It's cringy. It's, it's beautiful. I don't know what else to say. And uh, I guess the best example of that, and I didn't get to see it, but I know two of the people involved. At that church that I served, before I got there, the pastor had, there's this man who had come to the Lord, and I guess he'd been serving the Lord for a little while. He came from a rough Glaswegian background. And uh, I guess it was something to the effect of he'd put in a position kind of like a deacon or a helper. And they were holding service. And there had been a pretty loud disturbance in the back of the church. Something was going on. And so pastor says to the brother, um, would you go deal with that? How would you go deal with that? He's Glaswegian. So he went over there. And he went, wham! Gave him a headbutt, dealt with it. The guy was quiet, you know. <laughs> I love that. Their heart is all in it, baby. I, I appreciate that their heart is right on their sleeve. And I appreciate that. And um, it's not, it, I don't know how to say this correctly. It's not, it's not like it's an unreached people group, but there's whole new generations, even here, that are like unreached people groups now because... God's just gone from their lives. I mean, churches are turned into apartments and restaurants and stuff. It's, it's, it's being removed by this, what do you call it, hu humani hu human, humanism, humanism and secularism. And so 
it's like an unreached people group in a way, if you understand what I mean. Because church, what's left over there is old monuments and so on. Now, there are churches there that are godly and powerful, but I don't know why. I was at France the past three years, and that was a trip. That's the complete opposite of um, what I've just described to you. So go the other extreme, okay? And I learned a lot, and that's where I experienced lockdowns for COVID and all this jazz. It was intense. And at the end of that time, God said, now, I want you to go back to Glasgow, and I want you to start a church, and I want you to call it Hope Church. Guys, I'm a pastor's kid. It is rough. I watched it really be hard for my folks. You give them hugs, you give them baskets of tomatoes or slices of pizza or babysitting or whatever. It's hard for any job to go on point, isn't it? When you know that the buck stops here. So I'm like, oh, Jesus, I so much want to go back to Glasgow. When I was in France, I kept fel feeling like I was hearing bagpipes all the time. I was losing my marbles. And what it turned out to be was the ambulances because it would go da, 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 da. And so I was going da, 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 Scotland the Brave. I was losing my mind. So I'm so thankful to be going back to Scotland. But I'm, I'm honestly, if you want to pray for me, I, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I, I feel about that big. And the Lord's out. doesn't the Lord do that to you? Ask you to do something you literally cannot do. Excellent. Then it's going to be him doing it because it's not supposed to be up to us. So if you want to pray for me, I need location in Glasgow. I need a, a venue. And I've heard that prices have quadrupled. And I need um, a team. I, I do not want to do this alone. And it'll probably be Glaswegians, which is great because it needs to be theirs. You know what I mean? I used to be a school teacher. They need to own it and not just have somebody come out and just do it for them. So please pray for me. Stop by my little table out there. Pick up my missionary prayer cards and pray for me. Use it to scare mice out of your closet. It works excellent. Totally recommend it. Sign up for my newsletters, yada, yada, okay? So, Scotland. Now, I want to go to the last two images here. The second one, the one I'm going to read to you right now, it's verses 1 through 5 in um, chapter 27. 1 through 5? No, 2 through 5. In 2011, I took, I didn't know I was going to go back there for missions, but I took a trip to the United Kingdom, and I went up to Glasgow. I, I, just, I, I saw, if you look on my table up there, you'll see pictures of guys playing the drums and bagpipes. They were street musicians. They were brilliant. I thought it was great. I bought their CD, whatever. And the guy with the foxtail on his kilt, every once in, a, uh, once in a while, as they were playing the drums really tribal with the bagpipes swelling, he would go, ah! And I'm like, ah! <laughs> That's so cool. I kind of got overloaded, and I stopped at a, at a cafe, and I was sitting there kind of feeling a little, I was alone, feeling a little overwhelmed. And these verses right here was the first time this ever came alive to me, okay? Verse 2, in that day, sing to her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, keep it. I water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn through them. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace with me. This is so beautiful. I hope you can see all those pictures. First of all, again, it says, second time now, in that day, our champion, in that day when he's doing wrath, do you realize he wants to sing over you. He wants to serenade you. And do you notice what he's singing to you has to do with, now please don't misunderstand my heart, okay? I'm not saying drunk. But it's intoxicating. Do you real? we know that we feel it when God loves us and it's so palpable and like, oh, Jesus, thank you. When you love Jesus, you move his heart. He is affected by your love to him. He's not like, well, well, that was nice. Good try, kid. He is moved by your love. He sings over you. Also, look, 
that he uses imagery that Jesus uses in the New Testament. He keeps it. He keeps his vineyard night and day. I know we have to be little soldiers for Jesus and that it hurts and it hurts bad, but he will never leave you or forsake you. He is a shield around you. Yeah, we got to be tough. And, you know, Apostle Paul, I was reading this morning, I mean, he feels like he's uh, on display at the end of the parade, you know, an object of death. But he knows it's all for Christ. And you know that Jesus is like, yeah, son. Yeah, daughter. Now, verse 4, for those of us who are a bit more obstinate, hard-headed, and you know how we get fussy and we're like, God, I can't understand why you allow that. And can, the enemy can really mess with it. What you going to do? Come at God with a stick with some thorns on it. I'm going to get you, God. How dare you treat me? Like, really? I mean, it's like one of those little boys going, rah, 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 and the big guy's going, yeah, kid. <laughs> you done yet. <laughs> he burned right through it. All of our <laughs> that we throw at God, <laughs> relax. And then he says a powerful word, or. Let him take hold of my strength. Fellas, uh, good luck with this one. Ladies, I got it sorted, okay? My brother is 6'4". He has a very physical job, so he's a big dude. He's three years younger than me, but he's a big dude. Um, I know that if I go over to my brother and I just put my hand around his arm, I know that boy would keep me safe, and I know who he is, and he would lay his life down for me. Our Lord Jesus... We need to put our little hand around his strength, his arm, and we know he has laid down his life for us. And there is no good thing that he will withhold from us. I'm not saying slot machine, put your coin in and get what you want out. That's a slave. He is our champion. You put your arm around his strength that he may make peace with you and he shall make peace with you. It's not like peace for you, peace for you, peace for you, but not for you. No, God's like, I want to make peace with you and you and you and you. I want to make peace with you. Come, come, come. But you got to go lower. You can't come all striding in. You got to go lower. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I submit. Oh, ouch. I'm sorry. Oh, ouch. I was even worse. Wrong. Please forgive me. And as we lower ourselves down and get into the right position of Letting God be God and we be humans. Well, the last verse, verse 6. Those who come, he shall cause to take root in Jacob. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. But you have to come. If you keep pushing back, just like what we talked about in Sunday school and what we're talking about now, you keep pushing back, you can push yourself right out of the opportunity with God. You can walk yourself out. But if you will come, he, it says to take root in Jacob. That's the family of God. He made all the promises to them. We become one with them. Ephesians 2. The separating wall is removed. We become one. And we start blossoming. I always think of apple trees when I say this. I don't know what the writer was thinking, but I think of apple trees. You know, all the blossoms, fill it all up. We're coming into the season with flowers. Yahoo! And then all of a sudden, the flowers start dropping off from those knobby things. You're like, what's going on? And then they turn into apples. And someone out there, someone out there is just thirsty and exhausted and can't take it anymore. And they should be able to reach into your life, pick a piece of that fruit and go, oh, where did you get that? And that is your opportunity, shall we say it, to witness. Don't get scared. Just talk Jesus. Just tell what God is doing in your life. Because they need a savior too. Just, just talk Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't let the enemy bind you up. And it will blossom and bud and fill the face of the earth with fruit. Where do you find yourself today? Where is the Holy Spirit connecting with you? Was it in that first image where it was a, a false pregnancy? We thought we were going to save the world, but we didn't. Is it the second image where it's resurrection because Jesus does it? Is it in the third image where um, we need to come under his covering and, 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 and the indig indignation, the wrath of God passes by? Is it in the fourth image where our champion comes, our hero, mighty and strong, and slays that old dragon? 
Is it in the fifth image where he sings over you and you take hold of his strength? Or is it in that last image where we come and we take root and we blossom and bud and fill the face of the earth with fruit? Where do you find yourself today? I know the Holy Spirit's here, and I know he's talking to your heart and my heart too. Can we go into a moment of prayer? Can you block out the world? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would speak to our hearts today. What is it that you're saying to us? Where do we encounter you in your word? Which images, Holy Spirit, are you bringing to our hearts? What do you want to say? We open up. We receive Holy Spirit. We open up our hearts wide. We say, Holy Spirit, shoot, fly those arrows right into the center of our hearts. Speak, Lord. What are you saying to us? Where have I been holding back and not coming? And while we're in this attitude of prayer, and I want to stay in this attitude of prayer, I'm going to ask two questions. The first is, if you are here today and you are not currently in relationship with Jesus. I don't know if you had one before or not. It's not the point. But you are out of relationship with him and you want the relationship. And you're willing to humble yourself. I want to pray for you. Would you simply raise your hand? Just simply raise your hand and I want to pray for you and lead you to Jesus. I'm going to let it get quiet. Don't let it bother you. Raise your hand if you want to get into relationship with Jesus. Just let the peace of the Holy Spirit be here. And the second question is, what is the Lord asking you to do? Could he be challenging you today to let go of something or to start something new? And if you feel that challenge in your spirit today that God is asking you to make a change, only you and he knows what that is. It's going to take a lot of courage and a lot of relationship with Jesus, so I'm going to help you get that courage in motion. I want to pray for you. Would you stand up where you are? And I want to pray. Yeah, go ahead. It's going to take courage much more than standing in a room. So you might as well start with this. This doesn't bite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's room. There's time. Don't be afraid. You know what that is. You and the Holy Spirit. You just want to kick Satan in the teeth, give God the glory, and stand up and say, yes, Lord. Don't let the enemy, that old serpent, hold you down. Don't be afraid. Be brave. It's the Holy Spirit stirring up in you. That's victory. Hallelujah, that's victory. Give a little bit more time and I'm going to pray. I just, if there's anybody else, and if you get the guts in the middle of the, so the sermon, uh, excuse me, the prayer, then you stand up right in the middle of the prayer, okay? Okay. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in these lives. Oh, you're making courage rise up. You are giving victory over the enemy. Holy Spirit, I love how you are stirring up the fire on the hearth of their heart. You're laying the logs on. You're breathing Holy Spirit into that fire, and you're stoking it up. Holy God, I pray that your anointing would come down intensely upon them and those things that have held them back in the past where they have never felt that victory or it's been a long time since that victory, I pray, Lord, that you would bring resurrection power where it's not in our own strength, but it is by the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that you would do an overwhelming victory by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, as we surrender to you, that you would just turn your light on bright in us, that we would blossom, bud, and fill the face of the earth with your fruit by your grace for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Would everybody stand up together?
Lord God, thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you are calling us into the deep waters. Thank you that you take us beyond what we're uh, uh, able to do ourselves because it's going to be all glory for you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we say, Hosanna, you are Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. And we thank you, God, for all that you're going to do in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. is give those watching online an opportunity to respond as well. And this morning, if you were watching and heard what Crystal had to say there, she just spoke to you, spoke to your heart and life, and spoke something really powerful this morning. And I want to challenge and encourage you today to know Jesus yourself. If you're watching online, you didn't have any way of responding, but maybe you did. So I would ask you today, if you're ready to meet Jesus, it's, it's ABC. Accept that you need a Savior and that you're a sinner, and believe that Jesus is that Savior, and see, confess that he is Lord. And if you would say this morning you're watching with us, or you're watching this, who knows when, and you don't know Jesus, this is your opportunity to pray this prayer with me today and ask Jesus into your life. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, forgive my sins. Be the Lord of my life. I thank you for the cross. I thank you that you're my champion. Help me to live for you in a state of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and love. I thank you that you love me. Help me to live this life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, as I, as I generally always do, I ask you today to let me know. Pastor Jim Ferris at gmail.com or ctag pastor at gmail.com. Go to our website, ctaghiawatha.com to, to uh, find us there. And we'd love to hear from you that you made that, made that decision today. I can have... Uh, Jake and Jared, you ain't got the baby, do you? You can come on up here. Receive an offering this morning for Crystal's ministry and for what she's doing. We already support her. I'd say like I do often, if, if you would like to add to her support, Sharon and I actually have done that. That's one of the reasons we do support her presently. But if you would like to add to that support, we'll be glad to do that every month. Just let us know that you want to do that, and we'll up what we're already doing for her and uh, increase that giving and, and make a difference there. So, Father, you know the work that you have for Crystal to do in the days and years ahead till you return for us, and I believe today, for your Holy Spirit to touch her in a way, Lord God, that is unprecedented for her own life. God, when you speak to her, Lord, I, I trust it will be loud and clear. God, use us in churches like us, Lord, to, to support her financially, but God, prayerfully, that we would lift her up and know, Lord Jesus, that our prayers are being answered when we do hear the souls are being saved, lives are being changed, and hearts are being touched. We thank you, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver today for this offering, Lord God, that it will meet a need and give encouragement that she needs to carry on for the moment, Lord God, that you return for us all. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. People are watching online are like, what's he doing? Well, this morning, before we finish, I want to, uh, I need to make sure that's going to go where I want it to go here. I want to share with you a special, brief, special song by a very talented young man. And uh, I'm hoping this works the way I need it to work and it do, does what I want it to do here. But we'll, we're about to find it. You'll at least hear it if you don't get to see it online. And I apologize if it doesn't work that way. But um, it takes some doing sometimes to get everything like I want it here. So here's a special song from a very talented, gifted young man that I believe God's got some great things in store for. (laughs) 
I should have sent for him and had him do that live for you, but well, as we always say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Stand with me this morning. Father, we love you. We're grateful for your love, grace, and mercy and the hope we have in you. And, and Lord, we thank you for a word this morning to encourage, inspire, and challenge us, God, as we go back out into this, this world, Lord, that we'll be the light, be the salt, and be, Lord God, the hope that you have equipped us to be. And we ask you to bless and be with us as we go our way today. Father, bless our time of fellowship. And uh, Lord, if anybody has to go on, we just trust that you'll bless them as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope you can stay. If you can't, we understand. But uh, stay with us and, and eat a good meal and enjoy some good fellowship.